How to move Power Apps Biz Logic to the cloud for better results? Um, very quickly about myself. Uh, so uh, yeah, an eight time uh, business applications MVP been around for a while now. Uh, and these are my social media handles. So you can reach out to me. Uh, these in case you have any questions or you need some help. Uh, I write uh, my articles on the blog. The URL is also provided here. So you can you can go up there to look for articles uh, that I write about. Now moving very quickly. Uh, to what do I plan to cover in this session? So I have been uh, uh, have been on this uh, this today uh, for and I've watched a few sessions uh, before. And uh, so, so the whole idea, so most of the sessions that I've seen today have been around uh, the low code, no code uh, thing. But uh, one thing very important that uh, uh, that uh, that Annie presented in her session was the power platform is not just about uh, no code, low code, and it's not just for the citizen developers or the IT professionals, but uh, there is uh, there is uh, a lot of scope and uh, for for pro dev of all the advanced functionalities that can uh, that are required. So in this session, I'm going to cover uh, about uh, uh, some common business logic extension needs. Uh, what are the extens uh, extensibility options that are available today? Azure functions at the core, and then I'll open up the uh, floor for Q and A. So while I would have loved to include some kind of a demo over here and show some code. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have enough time for that. So what I've done is I've actually included uh, screenshots of uh, what what it really looks like. And if I get a chance, I can uh, actually switch to VS Code and show some part of the code as well. So uh, going ahead, uh, let's start with the common business logic ask. So like any any application, so power, uh, even with uh, CDS, or if we talk about the first part, like, uh, and Dynamics 365 for sales or customer service. Uh, Microsoft does uh, at the platform level, there is definitely certain business logic that has been incorporated. Now what happens there is this is common business logic, which is uh, which is going to be applicable to just about any uh, any user of the power platform. However, when somebody uh, tries to go ahead and adopt a, a power platform, uh, there there would be certain specific needs. So like we saw in the presentations earlier, uh, Microsoft does have the model driven apps and yet with Canvas app, you, you get the ability to design your way of looking at apps and your way of designing apps. So similarly, in, uh, even though there is some business logic embedded in the Power Platform, there might be need for, for every organization to design something that is very specific to them. Some of the very common asks that have been there uh, 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 that we have seen in the past few years have been like, you know, some custom logic to be executed when, say, you create or update a record, uh, some kind of a calculation, or you want to do some kind of an integration. So if there's a record that's created in CDS, you want to write it to any third party application, or you want to get it validated uh, with some, inf uh, some data to, uh, from a third party application. Or another common ask has been about uh, executing this logic at regular intervals. So something like a nightly job that does some kind of processing, some calculation, something that you do not want to do uh, during business hours, or you want to do it at regular intervals. So uh, quite often, uh, while while all these years we have been having uh, solutions to these things, they have not necessarily been something that is natively available, and they had some issues uh, that were there. Uh, like say, for example, uh, for extending custom business logic, we have always had the plugin and workflows. Now, while they worked well when when it was about uh, the on-premise days, and uh, we used to install CRM on-prem, and uh, we could just uh, have our plugins uh, registered outside the sandbox on disk, and then you can do anything that you want. But once you started talking about CRM online and execution in uh, within the sandbox environment that Microsoft provides for your DLLs to execute, uh, they started coming in restrictions with uh, with regards to the execution time limit. So if there was anything, any business logic that uh, uh, that uh, uh, that would that was uh, that required more than two minutes, it would be a, it would uh, time out. So uh, 
there was uh, again if we were looking at these nightly uh, nightly jobs or uh, scheduled jobs as you can call them uh, there, there there wasn't a native way to do that uh, uh, and there was always a hack that we used to do it maybe probably use the bulk delete job because bulk delete was the only thing that is available in crm that could very cleanly like you say no code low code just uh, schedule it and at the given interval it will just uh, execute it so maybe using using that that scheduler and getting your uh, custom code executed that was one of the common ways of uh, getting uh, a scheduler concept incorporated in in, in the D dynamics 365 so uh, uh, what, what in, in the next slide what i'm going to talk about is what are the extensibility options available today with the focus being on the word today so traditionally like i said there have always been plugin assemblies and workflow assemblies so these were basically as a developer you would create a a, a, a library a code library a dll and then you could register it and these this code would reside within your application database and then uh, uh, and then you could register triggers so there, there there were messages and you could say that on uh, you could define which, uh, you wanted your custom to, uh, custom code to be executed so uh, again these worked well however there were limitations now if we talk about today and the power platform of that uh, that we have been talking about power platform comes along with a uh, power automate uh, power automate flows uh, which is a way to execute this logic you can schedule your work over there and then again a very very powerful component of power automate is basically connector so if you saw any of the examples uh, in the previous uh, previous uh, sessions um, the when they when they used uh, when they use these uh, actions when they use the actions in their previous examples like if eliza if you see she used the predict uh, predict action of the CDS connector so it was basically a connector so you, you can you can design very powerful uh, flows uh, based on the connectors that are available to you again uh, power automate has uh, has like a more than 300 or 500 the last count i'm not sure how many the connectors available but if you wanted to create your own custom code and make it available as a connector then that is what we're going to see today uh how to create a custom connector uh, your own custom connector similar to something like the cds connector the sharepoint connector that you've seen uh in the earlier demos and then finally, uh, webhooks. Webhook is a, a pro dev topic over here. Like, uh, so what? Uh, so what? Um, webhook does is, uh, webhook is a, is a way to get again similar to your plugins and workflow assemblies, where you uh, where you registered messages. Now, like I said, in plugins there were DLLs. They resided within the uh, within the environment. Uh, webhooks again uh, your messages and uh, so it it it, it uh, you can register a webhook against the, your triggers so create update you can do and this time your your message uh, and all of the context information is submitted to a webhook which is actually an external web application that has uh, that is registered outside of uh, that is hosted outside of the CRM environment. We're going to uh, quickly like we uh, I'll do a brief overview of each of this as we move ahead. So let's start with Azure functions, uh, which is at the core of all the three I, uh, all the three uh, 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 components that I mentioned here. Whether it is Webhook, Power Automate, or Custom Connectors, it is Azure function at the core. So what we're going to uh, we'll first look at what an Azure function is and see how uh, once you have an Azure function created uh, and hosted, how you could use this in all of the other three applications that I have just mentioned in the previous slide. So what are Azure functions? Azure functions, as I've listed over here, is a serverless computing service hosted on Microsoft Azure. So uh, again, serverless computing service hosted, big words, this it's just simple a web application or your code which is which you you don't have to host it on so traditionally when you did a web application or you did a website development you used to have your own hosting service and put your code over there and that's where it used to uh, execute from so now with microsoft azure and azure function it is a um, 
it is a computing service that will be hosted on the cloud so you write your code and you publish it on the cloud and that's it you don't need to do anything uh, beyond that uh, microsoft takes care of all the hosting and uh, the environment and all of those details besides uh, given that it is on the cloud, then it gives you the scope for extending the power of your uh, of your. So, uh, so uh, when I say extending the power, it means that uh, say suppose uh, uh, generally when you have when you host a website, it has a certain bandwidth that it can uh, it can uh, it can uh, accept uh, the request for and consume. So if there is there is a heavy load of request, it is uh, it could get your 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 uh, website or your service could get slow. So with Azure, if uh, having if you go about hosting your service on Azure, then you can easily scale up and scale down your service depending on your needs and thereby control the cost. So you don't necessarily have to start big. You can just start uh, start uh, at a really uh, low level that is just enough for your off peak period. And once it once you have a peak period going where you need where you're, where you're going to make uh, many calls for your Azure function, you could basically uh, scale up uh, the service. Now, uh, one of the important things to um, uh, note over here is that uh, when you're creating Azure functions and hosting it on Microsoft Azure, you need an Azure subscription, which is not included and is not a part of the D365 subscription. So unlike plugin and workflow, where there, were not, there, where there was not an additional cost required and it was uh, you write the code and it is hosted within the application. If you are if you would like to host an Azure service, then you would need to purchase an Azure sub subscription and host your uh, services on the cl cloud on that subscription. Now, Azure Functions, uh, there are app service uh, that uh, comes with two models, two subscription models. So one is the app service model and the other is consumption model. Now, as the uh, as the name consumption suggests, it is like uh, uh, there will uh, there will be transactions which will be calculated based and the cost uh, uh, calculated based on uh, the calls that are made to your function. So if there are no calls made, then the, uh, then, the, uh, uh, then the consumption is low and then your cost for hosting is low. On the other hand, uh, you have the app service model. App service model is good when you want. Uh, so app service is a flat free model wherein it doesn't depend upon the per request that is made, but basically it is a flat cost uh, that is there. And within that flat cost, now you can hold or host your uh, functions and uh, we, we are, and Microsoft is not basically going to keep account of the transactions. Now, uh, code resides outside of Dynamics 365. So what, what this means uh, is uh, when when you write a code, uh, when you have traditionally written code in plugins or workflows, you would always get access to the context and the service. So suppose you want it from your if you if I'm writing a plugin and I say that on the create of an account, go and create a note. And if I had to create a note record, so I, I didn't really have to go and explicitly create a service object because the plugin, uh, I, 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 uh, my code was being executed within the CRM and plugin gave me the access automatically to the uh, to the service object uh, connect service connection and i could just simply use the service connection and go ahead and perform my create update operations as required and it would be executed within the same environment in which um, the um, code of the plugin uh, plugin is triggered now when i say code resides outside of dynamics 365 it does not have access to the connection object this means that you need to explicitly create connections with your uh, 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 create connections uh, and establish connections with your crm environment on which or cds environment on which you want to perform the actions now uh, one of the uh, one of the ways um, for doing this is uh, creating the app application user. So in in CDS or Dynamics 365, uh, if you uh, if you go into your uh, users, if you go to manage users, you will see and uh, in the in the view you will see that apart from your normal users, there's also something called application users. So uh, uh, it is a good idea to create an application user. So when you create an application user, you're basically registering an app in Azure. And once the uh, app is registered in Azure, you get an ID and a secret key. So use this ID uh, and create the application user 
in uh, in uh, C, uh, in your CDS, give them a security role. So uh, an application user is is like mimicking a normal user, but without using one of your licenses. So you will uh, and then once you create an application user, then you will give the security role. So based on the security roles provided, when when I try to establish a connection with CRM using uh, that app user credentials. Um, then I will only be able to perform those operations for which you have given the uh, app user permissions for using the security roles. So uh, again, next is execution timeout limit. So one of the uh, one of the limitations of your plugins and workflows uh, workflow custom code assemblies had been that uh, the two minute timeout uh, timeout limit. So over here, execute uh, the execution time uh, timeout limit in case of a consumption plan could be extended to 10 minutes. And if you're talking about uh, uh, the app service model, the default comes with 30 minutes, but you also have the option to reset it to have no time limit so that you can ex uh, you can have it execute uh, have your uh, custom long running codes uh, execute. Though it's not a very good idea to have some uh, any uh, code execute for that long. However, if there is a requirement, there is always an option available for you. Moving forward. OK, so again here I have added a very quick um, a couple of screenshots over here to show what is your functions are. So uh, like I said, as your function is nothing but uh, uh, your uh, it's like a web app. It will have a URL and you're going to use that URL to access uh, to get your code executed. So this is uh, this is the URL that you uh, that you see now. If you see on the uh, on uh, over here key now one uh, one way to uh, when you have, when you've hosted your code on the uh, on the cloud, you may want to secure your function. That is uh, since it's execute uh, since it's hosted on the cloud and it's a URL, it is accessible to absolutely anybody. But you of course don't want it to be open to just about anybody to go ahead and call your call your api so one way of uh, one way of uh, uh, securing functions is by providing uh, uh, app uh, function keys so if you can see on the on the right side over here uh, here you have function keys so you can create a function key which is like a, a multi character uh, key value Rohi. Rohi, we can't hear you. Are you on mute? Rohi? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I ah, don't know okay. how I went on mute. Okay, uh, okay did you fine. did you did you miss a lot of it? No, no, just a uh, 30 second maybe. OK, I'm so, yeah. I, I don't know how I went on mute. Uh, let me no, just that's fine. That's fine. You can just cover up. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll I'll try to repeat this thing over here. So here uh, we'll be talking when we're talking about Azure function. Uh, Azure function, like I said, it is it is like a web application which is hosted on the cloud, and there is a URL that you see. Uh, uh, so if you can see over here, it's a URL. So you can use this URL to call your code to call the uh, custom code that you have hosted on the cloud. Now, uh, if you see on the uh, now, uh, since this this is your function is hosted on the cloud, it is and it is a simple URL that is uh, that uh, that is there. Uh, it means that it is accessible to anybody and everybody everywhere. Now you will definitely not want anybody to be able to call your function and execute it without any kind of uh, security or authentication validation. So one of the uh, one of the uh, quick ways of uh, uh, of securing your web function is to create a function key. So if you see on the right side uh, in the screenshot, I have function keys written. Uh, uh, you can see the function keys over here. Now this function key is uh, is a multi uh, uh, so if you can see in the example code is equal to and there is this multi character string that is available over here so this is a key that you can generate and 
uh, you can uh, this will ensure that any time uh, uh, this will ensure that any time anybody makes a call to your function, they need to pass this key. If the key is invalid or if the key is missing, then the uh, then the function will not be executed. So this is one of the easiest way of securing your Azure function. Now, uh, in this example over here that I have, uh, uh, I have also demonstrated how uh, in in the in the Azure function that I've created now I take a query parameter which says tax code. So now here what what uh, this is an example of say a uh, custom tax uh, calculation. So uh, out of the box CDS does not do any tax calculation and tax is something which is differ differs with every country and possibly even uh, states and cities, right? It's not the same uh, uh, rate. Tax rates are not the same and uh, depending on the countries, even the tax calculation differs. So this is not something that is available at the platform level and you may want to write a custom uh, logic uh, custom code logic for this. So here is an example that I have done. So in this in this is your function. I've created a function called get tax rate. So in the get tax rate, the parameters that I'm requesting for is I request a tax code. Give me the tax code uh, that you want to get the tax rate for. And then, like I said, since um, Azure functions are executed outside of the uh, CRM environment, then you need to provide the environment details to which you need uh, to connect to CDS. So because my tax rates are going to be uh, as, uh, in this example, I'm assuming that my tax rate it's stored in a in an entity in CRM. So uh, so if I want to uh, read the tax rate uh, from there, so I am in the header instead of the query. An example in the header, I am requesting for three additional uh, uh, details when the Azure function is invoked. I need the URL. This is going to be the CRM URL and then the client ID and secret. Client and ID and secret is the uh, is the ID and the secret of the app that you have registered in Azure and the one using which you have created the application user. So hold on. Let me just quickly. Switch over here. So uh, here you can see that this is my uh, is your function and I have, this is my first uh, API function that is that is get tax rate and here I have passed all of the details so it, it has my environment details and um, and the, there is I've created an entity and there's a tax code over here which says taxable. Now if you see in this environment uh, after I have uploaded my I will also switch to the code quickly but uh, as you can see over here that in this screen once you have published your uh, function you, you can easily test your application and then you can uh, if you've written a uh, debug information and you want to just check and make sure that everything is working fine then you also have the log view right over there for you so let me just uh, quickly run this over here and while this is running I will also uh, uh, sh like to switch to this uh, app. So I have just opened this my code in VS Code, so I'm not going to execute it, but I just wanted to uh, walk through and show how how uh, it uh, it runs. So when you create uh, now uh, now your uh, when you create an Azure, so this is an Azure function that is an HTTP trigger. So if you can see, there are multiple triggers that are available, and I have created an Azure function that will that can be triggered using an HTTP request. So it's an HTTP request with get post and here. So here is my uh, the the details that I passed over this. So there is the CRM URL client ID secret and now so in Azure functions you have V1 and V2 of Azure functions. Uh, V2 uh, uh, V1 was the old style which used uh, .NET assemblies and V2 is the .NET core. So now um, uh, very recently as recently as probably last month or something Microsoft has released the alpha uh, alpha release of the .NET Core assembly. So now using these .NET Core assemblies, you can establish connection and this, these .NET Core assemblies work very similar to our old school .NET assemblies that were there. So it is the same connection, simplified connection string that you used to do in the old days. You do the same thing over here. It is just that it is it now supports .NET Core for you to be able to create V2 version of your uh, Azure functions. So if I go back over here. OK, 
I think I didn't refresh the screen, so probably this is uh, the screen has timed out. But when you when you run it, you will you will get the output uh, as the tax rate that I have uh, that I have uh, uh, passed. So if you can see in the code over here, it returns a tax code. OK, so it is going to return a tax code, the tax rate. And then just to demonstrate how a JSON, uh, how a JSON value is returned, I have also included is product taxable. So there are two properties that this JSON is going to include the tax rate and the uh, is product taxable. Two values are going to come through and it is going to be returned as a JSON object. So now, uh, uh, so here we, we have the Azure functions uh, covered. Now let me go and show you how once your Azure function is hosted, how we can go about and consuming it in both low code, no code uh, 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 platform as well as pro dev platforms. So over here, custom connectors. So like I said initially, uh, connectors are the base of your, uh, uh, if I can use the word base, it is uh, an important component and base of your power automate flows. When you design flows and you want to perform operations, uh, the uh, how flexible and extensible flows you can design or how complex flows you can design depends on the connectors that are available and the operations that they allow you to do. So while, they, uh, while uh, there are already uh, many connectors that are available that have been made available through Microsoft as well as third party ISVs, uh, you you yourself can create a connector for your own custom logic. So similar to so instead of rather than creating a plugin, you could create a connect. You could create an Azure function, and now we are going to create a wrapper. So custom connector is nothing going to, but a wrapper around the Azure function that I uh, that I have hosted on Azure. So what happens with custom connectors is now if you have a custom connector uh, created, your pro dev, uh, sorry, your low code, no code users, citizen developers can easily use this connector without uh, without having to know what is an header and how to pass values within a header, what is a JSON. They don't need to know any of this information. You have created a very end user facing uh, wrapper around uh, 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 as your uh, function that is there and they can very easily consume it. So uh, again, like I said, it can be consumed again through power apps or uh, power apps. So even through a canvas apps, if you know you can make a uh, you can add a connect uh, uh, call a call an action of the of the connector directly from your power app. So if I were creating so in the in the morning where we were doing that, uh, we saw a demo of a uh, mixed reality and placing of a shelf. So if you, if you were creating some kind of an ordering application and you want the tax to be calculated and you want the tax value to be read, then uh, you can easily create a connector out of it. And from your Canvas app, you can make a call uh, to your connector and it will return uh, the tax information for you. So uh, this is uh, about your custom connector. Again, I have a screenshot over here of what a connector, custom connector looks like. So if you go to make.powerapps.com, uh, under under data, you would see an option for custom connectors. Now, uh, uh, when you uh, custom connectors, now either you could be, uh, there are either you could start as a blank template and put in all of the information, or you have the option of creating a connector using a template from Postman. So Postman is a developer uh, is, is is a tool that most developers use to test their uh, test their application. So you can very easily. Uh, I did not pull up Postman over here, but it is it is like it is a testing tool. You can put your put your uh, put a URL over there. Put your put your get test uh, get information whatever parameters that are there and click uh, uh, test and it will uh, immediately return you the results. So the results that you get from there and the message that you have generated you could uh, postman allows you to save the request so once you've saved that request that same request file can be used over here to uh, to create a connector and i will just i will i will actually show you how how that is done as well so once that that is done you don't really need to uh, enter any information so you can see that uh, uh, from, uh, from the tax rate function and the API that URL that I had, uh, it has automatically created one action. Uh, and now I have to give uh, uh, give information about uh, 
uh, action. So it starts with again uh, uh, here in the screen. I'm talking about the technical information again. Uh, I don't need to fill anything when I use the postman collection. It automatically reads and uh, fills in all of the information. So this is the URL that is there. Uh, these are the query strings that are, uh, that had passed. So code is code is the API key that I talked about. App app function keys that I said that will secure your function. And tax code is the query string that I had said where you pass the tax code and I will return the uh, uh, I will return the uh, uh, tax rate for you. So I have the screen open here. So hopefully I just opened this few minutes back so this should work so now uh, like i said if you go to custom connectors and click new uh, new custom connector either you can create from blank in which case you go if you are pro dev and you know everything type your url uh, create your uh, uh, create your parameters and everything query string everything on your own or you these are the other uh, ways that uh, you can automatically import and get your connector started with so here i'll start with uh, this uh, say tax demo is the name of my connector when i click on import here this is a postman json file that i had exported and i've kept so if i if i click on open and i say continue now here is your general information so what do you want to call what is uh, what what is the image do you do you need to use for your connector the background color the description uh, and things like that you could you could uh, provide all of that information over here now uh, what it has picked up automatically from uh, from my json file is the url uh, at uh, at which my uh, co where, where the base uh, connector is going to be hosted my azure function is Again, okay, next, if you go to security, now there is a basic authentication API key OAuth2.2.0. Uh, uh, so you can use this. In my example, very uh, I have just kept no authentication. I'm going to use the code over there, uh, function key, uh, function keys uh, to simply authenticate my thing. But if you were some something like if you're using a graph API or something, and you wanted your AD information to pass over, you could auto, you could definitely. Use use or or two so when if you uh, if you had provided any authentication over here when you use the add connect uh, add connection uh, to this connector when you add the connector it will prompt you to enter the authentication information if you're authenticated it will uh, it will proceed further moving forward to the definition file uh, this is all of the information. So again, this is general information summary that I, you can just delete and type some uh, information that describes what your function does over here. So operation ID is a ID. So get tax rate CDS. OK, so this is uh, this is your action name. So when you when you add this connector in uh, Power Automate flow or something, what is the what is the action name that is going to show a uh, action code that is going to show up? That is that is what uh, operation ID. So give a unique operation ID over here. And if you see based on my JSON file, it has automatically uh, got the code and the tax code. Also the header information uh, because I had provided that in uh, in the Azure that header information is also required for establishing connections. So all of this information comes automatically. Go to the next and here's your testing screen. So if I have to first uh, click save, once I save it over here, I will be able to automatically test. So as you can see, creating a connector is uh, is super easy. It's just like again, it is a power user thing. If you hand over somebody uh, one of your postman uh, JSON uh, export. So this way we have a connector ready. Now connector ready, we can now consume this in uh, a no code platform. So let's uh, next move to our automate flows. So uh, Power Automate flows, as you say, it gives support for event-based triggers as well as one of the uh, good things about it is it also supports on-demand execution. So uh, if you wanted somebody, if it, 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 you didn't want it to be trigger-based, but rather have a, have a user manually uh, trigger, uh, trigger this information, then that is uh, possible as well. Uh, uh, so you have... Uh, Manu, can you just tell me uh, how much I am on time? I think I'm over time already. 
Um, yeah, Ruhi, uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, so uh, sorry. So let me just very quickly uh, show up over here that now that the connector is ready, now that the connector is ready, this connector is now available for you to use. So because you have or uh, again, you created a connector in your power apps over here. You have created a connector in this environment over here. Now, if you're designing the flow in this environment and when you click. So you see this is my connector and if I select this connector, then this is my action. So using this uh, uh, when I select this action again, it is just this. So it is basically hiding all the complicated uh, uh, complicated part of or the product part of it, and it has just given you simple information for you to for end users or power users to fill in the information and make uh, and just go about using it. So uh, yeah, so this is what I wanted to cover in my session that a uh, power platform gives you the capabilities to extend. Uh, uh, it's not just all code low code, but there is uh, the you can uh, pro devs can actually come in and how uh, they, the, you, the better together story can be done between a, a low code, no code and pro code uh, uh, logic. So um, yeah, that is all that I had to say. Uh, thank you, and I'm sorry for going overboard. I'm uh, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, these are my uh, these are my coordinates and information. And please um, take a couple of minutes out to please fill in this survey. And thank you so much. And.